the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. I, this is deep today. I really, I'm telling you, they deep every day, really, right? Every Sunday, right? But this is deep. This one is probably the most important message that was ever discussed uh, that we went over today, or I went over today. And I wanted to share with you, and I, I just want to encourage you to listen to these studies this week um, because it matters to you personally concerning the direction you should take in life, concerning the Word of God. And the direction should always be toward Christ, toward Yeshua, toward Jesus. You know, the scripture says in John 14, 6, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that means you don't go by the color of your skin. You don't go by your political affiliation. You don't go by your nationality. You don't go by what country you're in. You don't go by the country where you came from. You go by Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. But if you can keep that in mind, you can make a big difference. So we're going to go and talk about the study real quick. This is the introduction. And, and one of the things I want to do is make sure you know this is what we talked about today. This is a good question, too. It's like the fact is, and, and I like it, and I think it makes sense. It's a question. And I'm going to answer the question at the same time. Do Christians believe we are not accountable to God, but to man? And the scripture I'm using is Romans 14, 12, Jeremiah 17, 10, and Galatians 1, 6 through 10. I'm going to focus on the foundation scriptures in Romans 14, 6 through 12 that I'm going to talk about. But the point is this. Do Christians, because that's why that's what I am. I'm a believer in Christ, Christ Jesus. He's my Lord and personal Savior. So I'm asking a question as a fellow Christian to other Christians, right? I'm gonna answer the question in a second. But what I'm saying is, do Christians believe we are not accountable to God but to man? The answer is that we are accountable to God, not to man. And but your actions must line up with that statement, right? Because what people see. And let me get this up. Come off the screen right here. What people see is in most cases, it seems like people move based on the will or preference of your fellow man. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a believer in Christ. But you do the thing that is, you do contrary to the word of God. And therefore, you act like you're not accountable to God. Now make sure you get this, this foundational script I was using is in Romans, like I was telling you earlier, in Romans 7. And I want to make sure we cover those real quick. In Romans 7, it says, let me make sure I get it up there for you. I know I got to talk too long. Romans 14, side is 7 to 12. For none of us live unto himself. And no man dies to himself. For whether we live, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I say it again. Every one of us should give an account of himself to God. That preacher, that minister should give an account of himself to God. And if he's sitting there endorsing you to do bad things, you know, I have one of my friends sit there and say, 
I want to be able to talk about and preach about all kinds of things. And then I, some of the things, I don't want the, the system to discriminate me and tell me I can't preach about the Bible. You know, the, if you're teaching, if you're a Christian, you're teaching about preaching the good news. And people should walk out being able to go preach the good news. If people walk out and sit there and go and beat somebody up because of this exploitation or something else, if people go out there and go and list people because of the color of skin, you didn't preach the good news. Because that, you obviously didn't preach the good news. You didn't preach that they were supposed to love one another. You preached that they were supposed to be the wrath of God. That's not God. That's not the will of God. We should not be going around crucifying anybody. We should not be beating up anybody. We should be loving everybody. And if you feel that that's not justified, but you feel that the preaching the gospel is not enough, then you go ahead and be something else, but you're not preaching the gospel. And the Bible says if you preach any other gospel, you are a curse. You think about that. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to encourage other people to come to Christ. We're supposed to sit there and say that come as you are because the only person who can clean you is him. We're supposed to sit there and say the only way I can be holy is through him. The only way I can be righteous is through him. Remember that. That's what we're talking about today. So I hope you enjoyed this study. I hope you learned the session coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share what you learned to somebody else. Cause that's really what matters. You can subscribe all you want, leave a comment all you want. I don't care, I wanna hear what scripture, but I want you, if you're gonna comment, comment based on the scriptures. Because that's what matters. But the bottom line is this, we all are giving account to God. So I hope you enjoyed the session coming up. Well, I'm going to break them down into A, B, C, D, whatever the cup takes. And then I'm going to go ahead and send these out daily. But I want you to remember that Yeshua is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. And do His will. That's all that matters. Enjoy the session. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> Look at this in Galatians 1. Start at verse 6. This, is, this hits the nail on the head. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. See, when you know, when, when the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church is not about, I'm talking historical, I talked about how you may be today, I'm talking about historically speaking. When you sent people to first impose your will on other smaller Christian sects and beat them, hurt them, kill them, you you out of order because God did not call you to do that. When you sent Templars and, and Crusades to back to Jerusalem and fought the Jews, the native Jews, the Hebrews, and the Muslims, you were not called to do that. You are out of order to send those people to that. And you will, you get, I'm guaranteed those, because that's, we talk about three, two thousand seven years ago. To those who did the crusade, they are given account. They have given an account of themselves to God. Those religious people that sent them, they have given an account of themselves to God. And God will be the judge. Nobody else but God will be the judge of their actions and their behavior because he didn't call them to do that. It's almost just like when the children went into the promised land and then tried and said they didn't want to go. And then when they sat there and found out what the punishments were, they decided they're going to go ahead and attack the promised land, but God was not with them. We'll cover that one day because those, that's why the Old Testament is for us for learning and understanding. But for you as a Christian, Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And therefore, when you have ministries, political parties, anything else trying to do the things contrary to the will of God, you need to get away from that. You need to understand, no, I've got, I got a whole, I have, I have, I got an answer to God. And therefore, I will not do that because I got an answer to God. That you may have back in the wartime, they call them conscientious objectors. Well, you need to be conscious, conscious objectors, conscious objectors to your life toward faith, to people try to impose those things that's contrary to the will of God. Because you need to tell them, 
I rather obey God than man. Just like the uh, three uh, red, what, uh, three boys that were thrown into the fire, Meshach and Bendigo, right? Uh, I got I miss one of the names, but it's three of them. And they said, they said whether it's right, whether God will deliver us or not, we know he can. But whether he does or not, we will not bow down to you. We need to understand and start learning not to bow down. Talking about believers. Because the sheep, the wolves of sheep clothing, I'm telling you, they don't care about ordinance of God, the will of God. They 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 want to use religion. They want to use our faith to do bad things and cover themselves based on the will of God. You need to start we need to start recognizing that and start rejecting those things of people who are trying to get us to do the do things contrary to the will of God. You know God didn't tell you to hate you, did, you know God didn't tell you to lynch people, to kill people, discriminate against people. We know that. You know that's in the scriptures. You know that. It's just to love your neighbors yourself. So therefore, you're doing something that's going to contrary to that. You know that you are outside the will of God. And if you are a believer and you know you hang around people who sit there and say they're believers too, but don't do the will of God, you need to sit there and reject and let them know that ain't that ain't what the will of God says, man. I'm not gonna do it because it's not the will of God. I don't care what you feel, I don't care what you like, I don't care if I go to your congregation or anybody else. I'm just gonna do the will of God. Stop trying to please man and be accountable to man. Be accountable to God. Let's go back to the scriptures here. It says right here, because you do something other than any other gospel. See, <laughs> ooh, ooh, that is telling you, right? He said. And let's go back to it again. Verse 1. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Meaning, it's, it's, it's you're doing something contrary to, to the gospel that Christ taught. That's why I like this platform. The platform said it teach as the way Jesus, Yeshua taught, right? Because we're finding all this bad doctrine from all these different people who want to either get your money or want to control you, you need to sit there and say, no, I'm going to be controlled by and be led by the Holy Spirit and do God's will. Come on now. So in verse 7, which is another, which is not another, but there'll be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. And you know that was going on today. You knew that was going on in the slave trade. You knew that was going on with the Jim Crow's laws. You knew that was going on in the cell of witch hunt. You knew that was going on to the crusade. You know it. And you're going to be held accountable for it. Because some of you right now are, are following the will of your political party, or affiliation, and everything else. So I'm going to tell you something. I don't care if it's your mama or your daddy. If you don't do the will of God, if you sit there and sit there and put those wills of other people, contrary to the will of God, you go by some other strange gospel. You're going to be held accountable to God. You can take this scripture, you can get it, you can go even further in the study. But you don't understand this, you will be held accountable to God. Just like I'm going to be held accountable to God. You want to know that you will be held accountable to God. That you you don't hear it now. If you listen to this, and I want you to tell somebody else too. Don't just no other thing too. When you hear these type of studies, and it, and it lies in the will of God, share that. Share it. So the other people can understand you are held, they are held accountable to God. So when they start acting, when they call themselves a Christian, they start acting contrary to the will of God, contrary to the teaching of Christ, you need to tell them. So where what you do in lies with the will of God? Oh, I feel I don't, it doesn't matter whether you're feeling justified or not. When does your justification line up to contradict the will of God? That's what you want me to tell people. Verse 8, for though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. And you know you got people that sit there and preach something other than the Christ. So they're a curse and you're a curse. Come on now. As we said before, so I say, so I now, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel to you than that which we have received, let him be a curse. And I'm telling you that person and pastors, you need to listen to this. Just some of y'all need to tell your pastor, pastor, that's not the that's not the will of God. And you sit there and say, You're a curse, Pastor. You're a curse, mama. You're a curse, daddy. 
You'll curse, my friend, if you try to preach any other gospel. For do I now persuade men or God? And that's what you need to understand. And that's what this stuff, man, this thing is deep today. <laughs> well, you, it was too deep for me to tell you. Look, look, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, should not I should not be a servant of Christ. And that is what some of you, and that's why some of these people are leaving and don't want to come to your church anymore, your ministry anymore, because you are not preaching the gospel. You're preaching a politic. You're preaching out of your man. And you don't, when Peter sat there, when Christ told him, said, I got I to gotta go and be crucified. And Peter said, no, that ain't going to happen. Christ looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. For you are mindful of the things of man instead of the things of God. How many of you are mindful of the things of God or of the things of man? And if you are you mindful of the things of man, then you need to get behind me, Satan. And you need to tell people that try to do things contrary to the word of God is to get behind me, Satan. Because you're mindful of the things of man instead of the things of God. Man, boy, this is... I don't know, but let me keep going. <laughs> Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why do I put that up there? Because the fact is that we live by and have faith in God. And we have our hope. If you have hope to kill, mutilate, press, harm somebody, that ain't that you don't you're not gonna have faith in God to make those things come to pass. You're gonna have faith in your fellow man to do those things, which is what people have done. But they still gotta give themselves account to God. And God has said this, I didn't tell you to kill those people. I didn't tell you to discriminate against those people. You can sit there and you can you're talking another gospel. They may feel like it's good for you, but it gotta be lined up with him. And we know that. Because look at this. Verse Hebrews 11, 6, for without faith, faith in God, is impossible to please him, who? God, not man, but God. For he that comes to, see, he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. Not diligent like again, once again, some of y'all diligent to seek your political party. Some of you diligently sit there and seek your uh, black superiority or white superiority, everything else. You seek the wrong things. Because you, you want to please God or you want to please man. You choose. Because that's what he gives you a choice to do so. Make sure I got that right. In Jeremiah 17, 1. Yeah, I just made sure I just wanted to cover that. Good, we got it right. All right, let's go to the next one. Look at this, y'all. This is deep. This is deep. Computer a little slow, but we'll get there anyway. <laughs> so I was right. It was in Jeremiah 17, 1. Um, it'll come up in a minute. But the, the, this one is going to talk about the fact is that the sins of Judah. And, and what I did was I put underneath that the sins of Christians. Well, how about any better? The sins of yourself, right? There, there, the slide came up now. It says the sins of Judah. That's what's in the uh, header put in the scriptures because he's talking about Judah. But now we're talking about 2023, right? And since, right? Or behind that, right? The sins of people who call themselves Christians. That's, and I put the call themselves Christians, meaning they're, they're, they're not necessarily Christians, they just call themselves Christians. But the sins of those who call themselves Christians. So let's read it from that perspective, right? The sins of Judah is written with a pen of iron. And look, our history is written in the pen of iron. And all the destruction that we did, and call talking about we did it for God, is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their hearts and upon the horns of their altar. Mm. 
Will their children remember their altar and their groves by the great green trees upon the high hills? O thou mountain. We got Bobby Russell's in there. Let me see. That was Bobby talking about calling and see about because like I say, technical difficulties. So things kind of uh, jacked up a little bit. But I'm going back to 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 let's let's stay in the scriptures here. <laughs> so 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 as as the point here, man, I, I was talking about the those who who catching up right now. I'm talking about the sins of Judah. And I put in for emphasis the sin of people who call themselves Christians. And I'm going to tell you that the Bible says a tree is known by its fruit. So you can call yourself a Christian all day long. You can sit there and profess you got it going on. But the tree is known by his fruit. Are you showing the fruit of the will of God or showing the fruit of the will of man? If you're doing the will of man, then you're not a Christian. You can call yourself, like I said, you can call Christian all yourself all day long. But a tree is known by its fruit. And this is the sins of Judah. And I like this. And I'll start to read again real quick. The sin of Judah, the sins of Christians, <laughs> just well put it in there because it applies to you. The sin of Judah, the sins of Christian, Christians, is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their hearts and upon the horns of their altar. Will their children remember their altar in their groves by the green trees upon the high hills? That's when they're doing pagan worship instead of going to the temple. Oh, my mountains of the field, I will give thy substance and thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And that's what we, look, we as Christians in, in, in this country, it's like in this world, we need to take heed to this. Because if it happened to the Hebrews, why would it not happen to us? If they transgress and move away from God, move away from the will of God, and the punishment that has been perpetuated for years now, would that not happen to Christians who sit there or people who call themselves Christians and think that this won't happen to them? Look at this. Verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. And I will call thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Wow. You don't think that can happen to Christians? People, excuse me, you don't think that can happen to so-called Christians? People who call themselves Christians but not doing the will of Christians, not acting like a Christian, not doing the will of God? You don't think these things can happen to you? You just sit there and try to profess yourself, you're doing the will of God, but you do bad things, you're not operating in the kingdom of God, you're operating in something else. You don't think that this can't happen to you? These scriptures I'm showing you? And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. Because you never had it. Because you never really became a Christian. You never became a believer. And you never let him be Lord in your life. Because if he's Lord in your life, you wouldn't do the things that you do. And I'm talking about what you do to your fellow man. See, a lot of them sit there talking about, well, he went to club last night. Oh, Lord, he sat there and danced and drank and got drunk and all that stuff. He did that to himself. And God will work with that. But when you do something to your, your fellow man, see, that's what you're talking about even when you're talking about even drunk driving. When you sit there and get drunk, you eh, that's just, that's happening just to you. But when you get on the road and drive in a car and you kill somebody, do you know how that, that, that expands the issue? Because you did it to your fellow man. <laughs> you didn't care enough to recognize that what your actions do will line up with the destruction <laughs> of somebody else. You didn't do the will of God. You don't want to get drunk yourself, but you definitely ain't going to get drunk and kill somebody else, right? That's the thing I'm talking about. You sit there and think that you can do these things and act like God is, you're not going to have a reaction from God. Children of Cana, they, you know, Cana, the land, the promised land, God said they, those people lost their land. 
because the level of the sin that they did has reached a point where God is saying that enough is enough. I'm going to give it to another. And those of you who call yourself so-called Christians, not Christians, because the tree is known by its fruit, but you operate like you operate like a Christian. Could this thing happen to you? The answer is yes. He said, verse 4 again, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land that thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn, look at that, forever. You don't want that. But that is what we got to watch out what we're doing, even to this planet and everything else. Amen? So the study today is the fact is that we all give an account of ourselves to God. And so leave this one thing, if nothing else, what would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? Think that way as you move through life. Okay? <laughs> and don't worry about whether people approve of where you are, where you are or not. You are a child of God because it's the will of God. Remember we put that in 2 Timothy? He will for all men to be saved and come to the full knowledge of the truth of God. I'm putting things out. I'm talking to you longer because I'm trying to make sure you get the word of God because it's the word of God that matters, not me. But I'm guaranteeing you if some preacher or some Christian sit there and say, you are accountable to me, now I'm going to judge you. I'm going to assess what you believe or not. You need to sit there and say, you, I'm not accountable to you, so I don't matter whether you believe I'm a Christian or not. I don't need you to sit there and try to tell me that I'm, I can make an assessment myself. I'm not even going to make an assessment myself. I'm going to sit there and say, I'm a child of God because of Him. And I'm trying to do His will. And you don't sit there and come tell me with some small, thin layer, one thin slice of Christianity, and to hold me accountable because I'm not going to be accountable to you. I'm accountable to God. Stop letting people sit there and run people all the way from the church because you they didn't you didn't meet their criteria. You didn't need to meet their criteria, you need to meet God's criteria. You remember Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners of repentance. So he's seeking you. He's seeking me. Those people sit there act like they never sin, those people act like they don't sin. You need to sit there and say, get behind me, Satan. You're mindful of the things of man instead of the things of God. And don't sit there and tell me you want to give me one piece of God's will and hold me accountable for it. You don't hold the rest of the stuff in life that you're accountable for. Get a life. You pray for me. You have mercy for me. You don't sit there and condemn me because you have not the authority to do so. You should encourage me to do right, but you don't sit there and try to tell me that I'm supposed to think the way you think. Doing that. Running so many people away from Christ. One, two, people in church. So you got some people sitting there saying, how can you be a Democrat if you're a Christian? How can you be a Christian if you're a Republican? Get a life. You can be a Christian. You call yourself a Christian. You can be affiliated with any party you want. The question is, as long as you say that, his will is above their will, their platform your platform, your will. I am not being held accountable because of you. I will take those issues, those platforms, those things to God. And on top of this, and we will over this, I am not an instrument of God. I'm not a judge. I don't judge people whether they go to heaven or hell. I don't judge that. I'm just telling you, you need to be accountable to God. And if you feel comfortable with what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing with your bad self. But I know that I'm accountable to God. And you need to make sure you do that. When you confront people, they can confront you. You say, pray for me. There's some things I got to work on. But I hope you're praying for yourself as well. And I hope you line up with his will as well. Because you know what? You come in the way you want to, but you're going to give account to God. And one of the things you got to worry about is if you sit there and condemn me, if you sit there and come against me, and especially you're trying to use physical force against me, you're going to be accountable to God. Do what you do. You call what you want to call it. Amen. Man, I, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and reflect on these scriptures again. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put these videos out. And I, and I, and I hope that we all just study show ourselves approved. 
and just recognize we're accountable to God. What would Yeshua do when you make decisions? When you line up with that, I think you're going to make some right decisions. I'm not going to make perfect because no one's perfect. I ain't perfect. And I ain't said I am perfect. But I know what? I know nobody out there. I know. You know. None of them are perfect. None of them are holy. But they can be holy in Christ. You can't be holy outside of Christ. You can't be holy outside of your own preference. Your own righteousness. You're not going to be holy. You only be holy because of him. You're going to be righteous because of him. That's what the scriptures say. All right? All right. God bless you. Hope you have a great week. And I'll see you when I see you. I'm going to go ahead and do my introduction uh, for these tapes. You know, I'll break them down into segments, right? I'll break them down to from A, B, and C, try to do 20 and 30 minutes, you know, mostly, uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability. And and then I sit in and put those out, hopefully on a daily basis. I send out texts. I send out like a like today, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but the uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitter, they get it every day. You know, hey, you got to reach the people the best way you can, right? It's about the Word of God. Preach the gospel. That's what we call us to do, so I'm going to preach it. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to discuss it. And I hope you do the same. Learn what you learn. Throw out what's not important, but don't throw out the will of God. And share, man. We need to, we, we, let's share the scriptures, all right? And don't forget to subscribe, amen? All right, God bless you. I'll see you, I'll see you. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do my introduction for my videotapes uh, from this session today. All right? Stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.